that one of the reasons why um, we uh, mobilized ourselves into an open house, but uh, simply to actually uh, come daily back to the movement for them to get a feel for what is happening two minutes away from uh, Buckingham Palace and so on. So as one of the objective of, and still is, until the end of today, of the open house. But in fact, one of the main things that uh, today, uh, the last day of our open house, open hub, which started last Friday, and one of the things that uh, we have been able to do every day to maintain what we wanted to do was to focus on uh, the link between the value of data, knowledge and value of data, and the various key uh, uh, aspects of the current developmental uh, issues in the countries, and I'm specifically saying not just developing countries, but in all the countries, particularly in the Commonwealth. So uh, we've done that not in, in vague terms, because in the last two, three years, uh, an accumulation of uh, experience, by the way, of um, a, 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 a value-added cooperative fro a program from now on has been, uh, uh, has been achieved in what we call inclusive initiatives. And of course, the inclusive initiatives brought in uh, <coughs> the issue of value of data in very specific and concrete terms, but also brought in the issue of how one may deal with it, how one may um, uh, help each other through this map partnership and use a CPTM framework for the next two years. So we dealt with a number of these facets, but we still have to deal with what is called science, technology, and inclusion, innovation, inclusion uh, initiatives. And the reason we left it at the end, it wasn't Omar, if you don't mind me saying so, uh, because it was the least important or the most important, because it was because the issue of data, technology and data and economy, uh, is probably the issue that we need to focus on and we are, all of us, trying to find ways and means to understand uh, uh, new uh, cooperative frameworks, new way of funding, new way of uh, 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 mobilizing ourselves. So. Omar will uh, kind of having a whole week uh, uh, being uh, listening and participating in other inclusion initiatives will give us a bit of a feel for what he thinks um, about science, technology, innovation and the value of data in the digital landscape. Because science itself is no more the same science as before because of value of data. But that, not, that needs to be looked into more uh, practical ways. We do that for about half an hour maximum and uh, then we will try to have an overall conclusion of the um, liberating value of data open house week and um, uh, as related to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting 2018. Just to say that the Commonwealth uh, summit this year was focused on, and Omar will try to bring in, by the way of introducing science advice. Cathy Cunningham is here, very experienced in science policy and smart partnership and founder of CPTM. Uh, Robert Smith, companion and uh, uh, networking member. And uh, Nick Mohammad, who is uh, a lawyer. There is one link in the smart partnership movement that is missing, which because of the value of data, will have to be uh, triggered and Nick just as a lawyer he will come in and explain to us uh, has an idea about how to go about that. So Omar please. <coughs> Thank you Myla. Hello everyone online. Hello. Can you can you hear me? 
Yes, yes, very clearly. Now, Mahela just mentioned that uh, the focus of uh, Chogam this year is on uh, a more sustainable future, a fairer future, a more secure future, and a more prosperous future. I'm not sure how that links to what is being uh, uh, emphasized here, at least on, uh, on BBC television. Because uh, the, the topic that, that was uh, emphasized, uh, uh, I cannot relate that to, to sustainability, uh, fairness, uh, security, or prosperity at the moment anyway. But what I am going to touch upon probably has a little bit more relevance or relationship to, to a pr more prosperous future. And this relates to science science policy, science advice, if you like, and we'll come back to that, to link that with, uh, with data. <coughs> I happen to be uh, 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 looking at, uh, at the state of science in Malaysia at the moment, and, uh, and, uh, res and I was involved a little bit with, with what the Academy of Sciences Malaysia was doing in relation to what we call Science Outlook and uh, Science Outlook 20, 2017, which was released, launched by the Minister of Science uh, two weeks ago. But Science Outlook uh, 2017 is called actually a review of Science Outlook 2015, which delve into the status of science in Malaysia in depth, covering uh, STI governance, research development and commercialization, <coughs> science technology talent, engineering industries, STI and culturalization and strategic international alliances. That uh, Science Outlook 2015 actually uh, 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 evaluate the, the status of our science uh, and technology uh, 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 around that period. But when we look at 2017, we find out that uh, many of the recommendations made to strengthen STI in Malaysia uh, 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 has not been taken up by, by any of the, many of the stakeholders. So that is one point that uh, you can advise, but what happens uh, happen to that advice? Then uh, at the same time, I was looking at uh, uh, the work that's being done by a group uh, uh, in Malaysia in the, in, the, in, in the area of foresight and uh, future studies. And way back in 2012, the, 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 the Malaysian Foresight Institute did uh, for, uh, a scenario mm -hmm. for, for Malaysia mo uh, moving towards 2020. And uh, they have uh, four scenarios. The first one is about a star is born. The second one is called entrapment. The number three is called don't worry, be happy. And scenario four was sealed in a time capsule. Now when we look back now in 2018 of what was, uh, uh, for, for, for what was the scenarios at 2012, what I can say is that from the science perspective, we are actually in the, in the unfortunate position of being sealed in a time capsule. Although there were a lot of uh, 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 recommendations made of what uh, we need to do in order to advance to a higher level and to meet our national aspiration of being an innovation-driven, uh, uh, innovation private sector-led economy, uh, what happened on the ground is not uh, uh, it's not encouraging or it's not actually uh, uh, making us uh, uh, be confident that that will be achieved. So the question was that I raised is that you can have the capacity to advise, but, to, to, but do you have the matching capacity to receive and the willingness to accept good advice and to act on that? And I think this is a very important issue in, relati in relation to the overall science policy and in relation to the effectiveness of science advice. 
No use having capacity to advise if you don't have the capacity to receive and to act on the advice. <coughs> so now in, with respect to big data, yes. there are so many, uh, uh, so, ma so much information that can come out from yeah. big data <coughs> depending on what you are looking for to support whatever you are trying to do. <coughs> the same thing will happen if, if the advice is a data-based advice, the advice can be scenario-based advice, the advice can be what is, what is the, the, the evidence-based advice, you can have all that. But the, if the capacity to receive advice is not there, then it's not going to be help very much help. So after all this, I came to the conclusion that having the capacity to receive advice is very, very important. And that should be the primary uh, consideration in science policy in general. I leave it at that. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, well, Omar, I mean, I don't know, Keith, if you want, or Lekoma, or Rachel, but, uh, Kati, but... Yes, I'd certainly like to endorse, I'm intrigued by uh, the use of scenarios, and that's what I recommend here in Australia, and that was my third PhD is in scenario planning. And Omar, you really um, come up against a problem which I come up against, that people do not want to think about the unthinkable. They do not want to be challenged, they do not want to get out of their comfort zone. So although we can produce scenarios to stimulate thinking, we end up with politicians and others who just don't want to hear about the challenges confronting us. So I'm sorry to hear you're sealed in a time capsule. I'm downloading your report at the moment. Um, but my guess is that it'll be similar to the experience that we have in Australia. And that science and technology issues are simply not very high on the radar screen, um, certainly in Australia, and by the sounds of it also in Malaya. So. Malaysia. So many thanks. It's a very interesting presentation, Omar. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. In, in in my in that letter, I ma I mentioned that uh, <coughs> if we do not do anything positive in Malaysia, we will we will uh, we will end up by a fifth scenario, which is Malaysia for sale, and I we don't want that to happen. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, <coughs> sort of, uh, isn't it the? Um, the issue of uh, uh, the timing of your letter, you didn't quite explain why the timing. That was about a week ago or so. Yeah, yeah. This let, let, uh, letter came out at the beginning of the of the heat of uh, uh, campaigning for the election, which is coming up in in Malaysia on, on the fifth, on on the ninth of the, of next month. And uh, everybody was uh, coming, all the political parties were coming up with their own manifestos, but none of them mentioned anything about science technology, about strengthening the, the capacity for science and all that. So this was a letter that was supposed to, to alert uh, uh, on that. Interestingly, I just learned that uh, next week in Kuala Lumpur, there is going to be a, a, a kind of a seminar or dialogue uh, entitled put your money where your manifesto is. <laughs> and I'm sure going to be att attending that to see what, uh, what will, will take place. So Omar will say probably science will be in the manifesto. Yes. But, but there is, there is a, a very, so there is an important point here that in the current kind of political type of process in real time in Malaysia, if one is sending a letter of this sort to the star and everybody's reading everybody else, um, there should be probably something else that could trigger the attention to a short, succinct letter, statement of this one. And I don't know, Kiss, what one could do because this. Uh, to, to include science in political debate, which is what Omar is talking about, rather than science and yeah. rights as such. Um, uh, the, the, the technology, and it's not clear the definition uh, nowadays, technology uh, is, is, is made equivalent with data or digital technology. So that is the one that every day that you are in Uganda, you are in, Le in Lesotho, you are wherever you are, 
If you talk about blockchain and cryptocurrency, they say, ah, technology, financial technology. But somehow, there is a big gap between this narrative that picked up around data and the actual political debate and uh, everything else that follows with that. So uh, there may be an opportunity, I'm saying now, to leverage the value of knowledge and data within the political debate because everybody is trying to find out how Bitcoin function or all the rest of it. What do you think? Because there, there, there should be uh, a new... Uh, a, a new a new way of not justifying but bringing in science technology around the data age yeah but, but do you need a chief di data scientist you have a, a a science advisor chief science advisor uh, some countries have got a chief data advisor in prime minister's offices or president's offices, I don't know if there is one in Australia or if president. Not that I'm aware of. No, we have chief scientists, but not chief data officers. Yeah, there is. A, there was in. Uh, th there are in one or two countries, including in Canada. Uh, they are experimenting one. There was one in White House, but it disappeared. Uh, but what do you think, Cathy? Because you were in cabinet office, uh, kind of at a point of time, supporting. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you're posing yet another question, which we seem to have been having all week um, yeah. with, with very few answers because it, it is also new. I think that what we have to realize is that data, the, the nature of data has changed enormously. We all think about data being collected for a purpose. It's collected by um, tax officers or health um, departments or a whole range of issues, um, even for science and technology um, expenditure. Um, but there's also data being generated, but just by the way we live, by the use of that technology, the use of mobiles, um, in banking, in transport, in shopping, in, in all of those features of everyday life. And we've just woken up to the idea that that data which is being generated in this uncontrolled way is owned by a small number of companies. Uh -huh. And that is presenting us with quite a few problems. The the ownership of the data, it's now being um, discussed as really it ought to reside in the individual and the individual ought to be able to decide what is done with it. But how that is to be done is impossible to really spell out at the moment. It takes us in the direction of um, regulation, issues of ownership and copy copyright, takes us into a whole range of legal aspects, but it also raises questions for education. Um, how many people really realize what is happening to data and how it can be used to maybe damage mm. their lives? Mm. Um, and we started the week by discussing both data and co complexity theory, yeah. and that um, none of us felt able to wholly grapple with that, but it was clearly relevant and something we felt we needed to pursue even further. So, uh, j just if I may, I, I, I just have in front yeah. of me that one of the statements of uh, Yanir, and I was just. Uh, uh, underlying that what he was trying to say, Professor, and he was that um, uh, having more data um, which for which we are expected to develop models 
and analytics which, which would give us more prediction, more ability to do more things like the scenarios you're talking about um, uh, is not the answer of um, how to be able to uh, uh, make best use of the data. So, uh, because uh, uh, it is not sufficient, it, it, okay, he said the first reason is that including many details, many data, without determining what is and what is not important cannot tell us whether we had included the details that matter. And the second reason about this big data available is, is that including many details that don't matter actually prevents us from addressing the question we really want to answer. Which levers are important, for instance, and so on and so on. So actually, this question of uh, data being available, collected or not collected with a purpose, and then picking up data and using analytics, mathematics, and so on, um, is not yet refined. So leveraging the value of data probably has to be a bit more primitive for the time being. Like, for instance, in in legal profession where it does um, provide, or accounting uh, profession, where it does provide an ability through blockchain technology to, <coughs> to, to, to have um, uh, clusters of data which... Uh, uh, are distributed to various points in among the legal uh, advice that needs to be determined, or the accounting if they have uh, data which is distributed between the bank, the collection of the data through invoices and so on, and the analysis that you have. If you have these blockchain technologies, uses that, or in relation to the trade. Yeah, there are, when I say primitive, there are immediate low, low, low um, analytical content of the data that is collected. That, that is a very, very visible use currently. Um, you can trace back where the coffee comes from or the wine comes from and so on. But if you go a bit beyond that, because there is available data and you try to develop models and so on which gives you some prediction about more than an analysis, behavioral analysis, that is not yet quite there. So that, that is one. And in the science technology innovation, if the science, Omar, as a chief scientist or as a science advisor, if you were to, you have this enormous amount of data at any point of time were it to be in Prime Minister's office, how better off would you be today than you were about 20 years ago? No, see, serious now. What would you do with this available data all over the place? No, this is where, this is where, the, this is where analytics come in. All, of all those things out there, you have to sort out the, the kind of a thing that, the, the, the kind of data or information that you want. Mm -hmm. So not, not everything is useful for you. This is where analytics come in, and this is this is a new area, and it requires new expertise. So uh, this is where uh, companies develop uh, to do th to do this work, and then they can provide the kind of information that, that the customer the customer wants. So for for for, for the in in the, in the sense of science advice or, or or science policy, you need special expertise now within within the. Uh, within the uh, STI governance system, for 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 a group to be looking for the kind of uh, data that will help them to do whatever whatever the, the whatever you want to do. So just having big data that will just bury you without uh, you know any, any use. But it's it's a it's the analyzing those data to pick to. To get the kind of data, the information to get to get the kind of data to give you the information that you want, that is the critical part. So again, it is putting a burden in a, in in a, in a, in a, in in an, in an 
in a situation where the governance system is not strong, then 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 you cannot you cannot do this anymore uh, uh, anymore than uh, 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 any better than if you don't have a good system even to receive advice. So this is something that uh, that goes into the complexity of science, STI governance and uh, 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 the part of the, the the whole total of STI ecosystem. I think that needs to be recognized. But Le Le Lekoma, in the vision, in the vision, uh, say the twenty, the, the the vision in Botswana, when yeah. we were listening to Sir Ketubila Masira, His Excellency, so many years ago during the days and the nights, and he was so keen to bring in issues of technology as they would happen in 20, 30 years. Yeah. Uh, if you remember, uh, each and every pillar. Somehow, he he uh, he wanted to be alluded to the technology. Could you could you come into that? And if there was to be today, would one kind of for the vision that is emerging, would one bring in data as such or technology <coughs> and data, or how would you come about? What would Circuit Minimum do? <coughs> uh, well, it's a bit, uh, you know, complicated by, you know, the lack of commitment and uh, at the top. So, so really, um, it needs to be, you remember that uh, um, uh, uh, Chapello was talking about yes. so trying to send to Omar. It really has to start all over again. Because we were discussing uh, kind of about the impact of data in on the national visioning process, and uh, data is usually associated data technology. So that is part of the science technology innovation advice. Yeah. Um, so, so, so yeah, I, I, I want to hear yeah, it's just, it's just it's your writing because there, there's nothing on the ground. Yeah. But it's nothing on the ground yet. Yeah, we, we have to start all over again. That's right. Uh, we, we, we do something. <laughs> we want to be creating and doing that. But, uh, but, but we have to start, but we have to start all over again. Mm -hmm. But you see, I, I mean, Botswana has a, a, a very uh, well already developed mobile uh, connections, mobile connections and telecommunication and so on, isn't it? Yes, yes. And of course it has the uh, diamond and all kinds of other things. It's, 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 uh, industry or uh, everything that goes with it developed yeah. and um, many other things so most likely there is data uh, trading already taking place yeah yes but yes but uh, you know uh, it, 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 nobody's doing anything about the organizing so that mm. the house development there's no coordination you know, anymore. Uh, of, 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 of all of yeah. and that's why I'm saying we have to start. What's that all about? I mean, the meeting council. Somebody else took a pen. Kathy has a finish. When you talk about real situation, talking about what. You 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 want to happen, you know. You wish could happen, but 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 it's nothing. Is here. We 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 have to really go back and and, and start all over again. Anyway, Kati, how, how do you think from from the center? Is it still from the center that one can pay attention to trigger again a new process of integrating? data with technology and science. 
Well, I think we've all reached a stage where we're all rather frightened about the, the data and don't understand the really why we're frightened, but we are. Um, we feel as though there's a sort of the potential for a big baddie out there to get hold of it and do terrible things with it. But, um, I, I mean, I think that we ought to have science and technology mm. institutions, whether they're of, of government or even in business, which can help to inform us. Um, everyone wants to understand better. For example, the police need to deal with cybercrime. And that's an area which it should be possible to deal with. But it's the, the, the problem is that the data is global and the cybercrime is global mm -hmm. and it's being tackled by national police forces and maybe regional police forces but not global police forces. Yeah, and I think that's, that's just that's one right. example of yeah. where this mismatch between the globality, mm -hmm. so if there's such a word, okay. of data, and the sort of um, the, the way in which the world is organized into separate compartments, either states or companies uh, or, or things like the EU, for example. Um, and, and we sort of had to try and bridge that gap. Now, as I said, this session has been much more one all week of, of identifying the questions mm. but find, feeling it's more going to be more and more difficult to find mm. the answers. Mm. But, but Katy, what's the difference between, uh, I mean there must be a big difference because otherwise we wouldn't have been agonizing the whole week and we are at the forefront actually of uh, a number of things related to data. When uh, uh, in a national uh, rather than globality context. One is bringing in science and technology. Yeah? That science and technology, most of it, be it Lesotho or be it UK, it resonates to each other. That the biotechnology, you remember you have biotechnology, you have the same things, you go in all the science policies, you have the same things, same aspirations. Well, there could be the same uh, thing, the data added to it, with aspirations of a kind, which we haven't yet uh, identified what they are, how to leverage and what for, the data. And contextualize in a national, because there is a globality also about science or uh, another science and technology. It's just that data seem to be more invisible, more difficult to relate, although everybody has it at its finger with a mobile. So well, yes, I think we were talking, yes, sorry, go on. Le coma. And there are institutions, you know, this is not a technology center, but, you know, they are just quiet. They are tired, yes. that brings them together, you know, to start, you know, a moving forward. Data would bring them together. So, you need to really put light into this and make them understand that they are part of the whole. They are not existing there, you know. In, 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 in their own little compartment. Uh, that this, this, uh, and, and the vision is the thing that, 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 that brings it all together. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was quite, I was quite uh, impressed with uh, what uh, uh, Dr. You know, Ma was, was just saying at the beginning. You know. but, um, how how once uh, once this organization is functioning now how you know whether they are capacity to receive advice and so forth uh, I think those are the kind of things that one should start working on because the institutions are here uh, you know it's, it's just that they have been pushed aside 
But uh, Le Coma, the nature of advice, you were advisor, economic advisor, but or my science advisor uh, in uh, Secretary of Serious, His Excellency's office for so many years. And that those days there was willingness to, to, to listen, you know, and, and, and to, to, to consider and, 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 and to apply. Okay? But that now there is, you know, all that is gone, and uh, uh, so people are, you know, other, you know, agendas, stories, uh, which, are, which are not national. That's that, that so you're saying that there isn't the demand for advice anymore? Of a different advice. Is a different in the nature of advice? Are you saying there isn't the demand for science advice, or that the the um, the, the advice that's being looked for is, is different? The coma. Well, you know, the 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 demand in 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 in. in, in in a way, if you have universities and then you have all these people, so. but you're always in, you know, in, in, in isolated Sign compartments. Right? Yeah. But it's no overall, overall incentive. If you, to, if you go into the university, you know, within the environment of the university, you may find that there's a lot of vibrancy people are talking about, you know, but uh, uh, so isolated. It doesn't mean sex. Can I ask you? Can I ask you whether you think that maybe government is receding or sort of moving away mm. from trying to exercise as much influence? And control over policy mm -hmm. and development, yeah, that is a and leaving it more to the market. Mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in, a, in a way, yes, maybe you have to, you have to be. Yeah, I, I would say that yes. But the, the many, they, 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 they are concerned about other things, you know, at the top. So, yes. Um, uh, okay. I know. And this, this thing needs to be coordinated. It, 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 it. Ordinary people in the streets have to know that the government is interested in this thing and, and, and the government is encouraging this thing. And, and, and there's general discussion about uh, And that's when it works. And this, I mean, would you also say that this can be um, a problem for the less developed countries because if it's left to the market, the market is largely in the hands of global companies, if you like. Yeah, that's, that's, well, that's the major thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, here, here in Africa, yeah. we have a lot of institutions that Are you online? Florence, they are muted. Rachel, Tadeo, yeah, the 29ers, mm. the kiss. Yeah. Do you think the nature, yeah. the nature of advice is dependent on the na nature of government? And if the government is perceived, uh, this, uh, all the government system is perceived dysfunctional to some extent, yeah? Mm. Then the nature of advice is again quite different. It's coming from... Well, it is. Well, I think there is a paradox uh, which we're touching on here, yeah. that on the one hand, politicians yeah. don't seem to be all that relevant to what's going on in society, and at the same time, um, society is changing yes. rapidly in terms of science and technology, economic development, etc. And I think that um, instead of being in the business of nation building, 
Uh-huh. Governments are now increasingly, particularly in the English-speaking world, leaving the job of running the economy to corporations and to the market. And so it seems to me that people who should have an interest in this type of subject would be the market, would be the corporations. It's interesting, for example, we've been talking about scenario planning. Who developed that in the civilian sector? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yes. So That's in fact, the, 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 the drivers of change are yes. now the corporations. Yes. and not governments. I realise on the continent it may be different in Scandinavia and Germany, but certainly in the, if you look at the UK, Australia, the United States, Canada, New Zealand, the drivers of change are no longer the politicians. And I think that probably what we're getting at now is the need for a more sophisticated political analysis exactly. of how you bring about change within society. And then one subset of that is the whole question of data and who should be making the most of the data. Ideally, it should be politicians. But yeah. politicians have really reduced their role within society. Absolutely. Well, 29ers, uh, who is online? Rachel from Kampala. Uh, Dr. Myla, Tadeo. Online. This is uh, Tadeo from Kampala. Right. And uh, I wanted to take my submission from uh, the gentleman who has just that's Kisuta from Australia. Yes. Um, for me, I think a bit of that also Say again. That like they have been emphasizing the issue of leadership. Now, uh, that of leaders need to be made aware of the risk of lacking the appropriate technology to have uh, the maybe yeah, we don't hear you all that well. It's not a good line. No. Are, are, you, are you at the hub? Today is Friday. No, 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 I'm not yet at the hub. Ah, that's, that's why. why we are individually in our own location. Okay, no problem. Go ahead. Just speak a bit louder and I don't know. Yeah, please. Thank you. Okay. So I, I will say data management is much more of an institutional question than, than indicating the responsibility. So we can all put our eyes to the government who to put up and put up a policy management rather than us waiting to see the situation where if you individually about the technology that everybody is embracing at the moment, I will tell you, like the like, king like say, our leaders uh, are not, it, most of them possibly do not appreciate the technology. Some of them do not have the information themselves. Some are, we haven't even set up maybe the data advisory you know, department in our own country. And then, then we are looking at, at, at there is a lot of information, for, for example, I will tell you that maybe institutions like uh, the national planning agencies will need in, in, in vision, for example, in terms of, you know, understanding vision, understanding things like uh, um, planning and, and, and maybe budget allocation. Information is, is a preserve of government. Government needs this more than anybody else. However, if we realize that the people in positions of authority have not taken up this topic, this guy, we, we do not have a bit, we have a lot of expertise of the terms of data analysis. For example, we will look at information now that can be. For example, the Ghanaians have embraced this technology. But most of them do not know the risk of oh, Even when you go at the, 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 the background information on, 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 on a Facebook account, you realize the students are embracing this technology. They are all opening up Facebook accounts. But they do not know what to do the risk that, that, that by exposing certain information, you are making yourself maybe vulnerable in some way or the and then and we might like I said, we might have to push it to a level where maybe the institutions that can be regulated and who is a regulator, who can apprehend the wrong to the government again. So No but Tadeo, Tadeo. Tadeo, just a little bit. Let's be a bit more specific because you know and Rachel and I probably know, relate and probably Omar. But let's be more to what you say. 
a bit more specific. Take about two weeks ago, or whenever we were together, uh, all of you and myself and Ellie, and we were um, waiting to see His Excellency. And while we were there, you just noted the Minister for Science and Technology, isn't it? Hello? Yes. Uh -huh. And you remember where he was trying he, to get up with his team, he was going to His Excellency the President to brief him about you, you take, can you explain? And you introduced of course, me. We, met, uh, we introduced ourselves and talked briefly to the Under Secretary in the Ministry of, uh, of, of Information. This is, a, this is an employee within the Ministry of, of, of Science and Technology who works at a level, but I, I can tell you that now, uh, like, like, could realize we try to explain ourselves and, and how much our uh, 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 to, 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 to advance some of these issues that we have been discussing for a very long time. However, I, I will tell you, we might not be in position to know the gaps in there until everybody gets on board. Because the, the leaders are in some other space and some people who have uh, gotten the information through education and learning. I will tell you, some of these things are not even told in our higher institutions of learning. But we expect maybe you have to the a helper course or the, the right human resource for us to be to establish some of these these, these very needed, you know, um, establishment. So at, but, the, uh, at the end of the day, you realize maybe we will go and look for the gentleman again and then maybe he get to understand what they are trying to do currently and what are the challenges in terms of the knowledge gap where we could come with board and through a collective effort through platforms like this, I, I definitely know where to run. Maybe we can get some more information to get the absolute Now, you remember that when we were talking to the minister, he was trying to bring, bring in the chief executive of the electric car? Yes, yes. And we asked yeah. the minister, we asked the minister, do you have a science advisor to have briefed His Excellency beforehand, even the minister? about the ins and out of the technology with that and connections with other things. And the answer was, well, maybe we talk later or something like this, isn't it? But on the other hand, they were going to the leader of the country to get him to make decisions. And, yeah, yeah. and it was the same, we shouldn't uh, go in detail, the same with the agricultural hub. Agricultural Logistics Hub, where, you know, so the, what Tanshi Omar is coming up with is to uh, kind of portray some kind of scenarios or ways of uh, looking at what would it happen if one would continue to think of uh, going to leaders, politicians, to make decisions, you abuse them more or less, if they do not have some sort of advice on which basis they could kind of rely on. And one would say, oh, you don't need advisor in the office because you have the internet and the website. You can download an electric vehicle car. Omar, you couldn't do that before. You remember when Dr. Mahathir wanted to look at composites? But instead, you got involved with all sorts of people, isn't it? And by getting involved people and getting advice from them, what is the status of composites, you got a network. And you got, after that, a possibility to follow through. But if, can you explain a little bit? Because it, it's very relevant how, how did the Prime Minister got involved and got to understand what is the composites useful for? Without yeah. having data I, available at it. I think uh, the uh, pri prime ministers or I presidents uh, gets uh, gets ideas or get proposal from uh, from th three different uh, sources at least. Yeah, number one from within government itself, and, uh, and number two uh, for maybe from industry. And number three from 
let's say from uh, from any other sources. If it, even if it comes from the government, maybe he has some kind of a confidence that uh, the, 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 the idea or the proposal has been very well vetted and uh, evaluated and then uh, he has a specific proposal for him to agree to and then he'll bring it to, to cabinet anyway. But if it is from other, other sources, he may feel that he needs some kind of an input. This is where advice, uh, this is why uh, min prime ministers or president wants, uh, uh, wants uh, uh, a science advisor, chief, sci chief scientist, that he can refer to to give him a second opinion. So, and then, uh, and then, of course, the advice or the uh, 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 the proposal may come from the science advisor himself, and that is where the relationship between the science advisor and the and the head is very very important. That uh, he is confident that uh, what is coming from the science advisor is um, is not uh, has no sort of uh, personal bias or personal preferences or something like something like that. So all this meaning that again uh, it is it is capacity to 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 receive advice. Where does he put uh, 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 what what is available uh, to the to the to the uh, to the system to receive and evaluate and act on it. This is where the the the, the Sometimes the, the the big issue concerning uh, concerning a, a major thing in the country, it probably goes to the science council or something like that. But sometimes uh, uh, it can just be something that just to the to the prime minister or the president, and he brings it to cabinet without having to go through a, a, a bigger sort of a, a evaluation process. So uh, I come back now, uh, realizing now that it is actually uh, capacity to receive, evaluate, advice, and then uh, and then uh, and then willingness to act on that. So this is the, to me, a, a very important thing. Looking at the experience of, of, of Malaysia. But uh, it could it could very well be Omar that uh, we we should in the next two years focusing on this inclusive initiative related to science, technology, mm. advice. Probably it should be science, technology and data advice. This is and where, yeah, if, if, I, if I can come back here just as I, Not many years ago we were talking about information overload. Now I think what we are talking about is data avalanche. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the same thing. Now instead of information, it is now data in bits and uh, for uh, bits and pieces, and it comes in huge, uh, uh, huge wave that uh, that can actually drown a whole nation. So what do you need? Those data has got to be analyzed. This this is where analytics uh, analytics coming, and analytics will give you. Just come to my mind three things. One to give you an understanding what is the new norms in your population. Mm -hmm. Secondly, yeah. it gives you what, what you have been saying, spotting signals. Yeah. And thirdly, of course, discerning new trends. And this signal yeah. or trends can be in politics, can be in economics, can be in social, or can be in, in, in science and technology. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, those things have got to be integrated and then it become a database advice. Then it goes to the to the to advice to the ad, advice receiving system. Uh -huh. Then only then it will be turned into policy and strategy and so on and so forth. So if you look at it that way, you are not frightened by data, because data has got to be analyzed first to see, you know, to give you those trends. And the trend <coughs> that you want depends on what are you do you are doing. If you are a company, you want a trend to see whether how my product is going to be uh, useful uh, now and in the future, that kind of thing. For government, it's a bigger thing because that is going to be to lead to policy and and, and, uh, and, and strategies and action plan. So uh, 
cannot we cannot talk about data in a, in without saying that uh, data is only useful uh, or if you can extract the information to for, for your own specific uh, objective otherwise uh, it, it is going to be an avalanche that can uh, vary but to you. do so yeah. you require policies no, related no, to no, just you, doing you, that you require analytics and you need have to cut capacity for that mm -hmm. and this is part of the of, of, of government having to build capacity to do that in 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 uh, in, in various places you not just for for technology but for economics for uh, for social and for, for, for political trends or political issues so i think um, anyway i think i think probably uh, if we t talk in terms of uh, within the the com commonwealth, this is what um, the the um, the um, um, at the beginning of this week, there was a commonwealth chief scientist kind of uh, meeting of about kids about two days, uh, two days. and uh, we had. <coughs> the uh, National Council for Science and Technology from Seychelles, part of uh, that, who briefed us what it was all about, what yeah. happened. And really they were, actually if you think about it, discussing in isolation from all these issues which are so interconnected, issues particularly the data. So I was wondering if we were to pick up in Uganda, Tadeo, yeah? In Uganda, if we were to um, to think in terms of the science, technology, data inclusion initiative, yeah, and try to see to mobilize um, minist the current Ministry of Science and whoever is involved in, and see what they say, because I. Um, Again, even the central bank governor and the chief executive of statistics and so on, they are dependent on having some sort of science, technology, data advice. Yeah? And it has to be the same one. So I don't know if you want to consider it also as part of your, uh, your uh, menu of what you're going to do for the next years. Tadeo? Hello? Are they not? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so we do need... Yeah. So, so. And I'm saying, like you have, you have clearly intimated, there is a deliberate attempt for us to reach out to the various um, implementers in the inclusion initiatives, like uh, the, the Bank of Uganda, uh, the the governor is a very ardent fan of, of smart partnership movement and most discussions that have happened is privy to the information that we are sharing even now. So uh, and, and we will reach out to the Ministry of Science and Technology and, and try to also see how we can we can we can we can share with them what we know and get to know what they are trying to do currently because they have the mandate on behalf of the entire nation. So we will also reach out to the National Planning Authority, which is, of course, in charge of the national visioning. When we say the next two years, everything that we might achieve should be in the National Planning Authority framework, and then it helps us. Because they are also, the, the, the director there is the chairman of NPA, is, is, is the, the, yeah. the active smart party. <coughs> so in, in a way, we have where to begin from. And you already have a lot on our plate. And, and I can promise you, we, we have that ready to sell. We just need to be moving out to these institutions and, and, and then getting in touch with them to understand how we can, we can advance. Yeah, but what, what in a way Kiss was saying and Katia and we were all saying was that government structure, be it Uganda or wherever else, they are. A, a little bit out of their depths, they need to to cope with this issue of data and science. So the structure that exists, those that you mentioned, may not be those that would want to pick up new approaches 
to integrate the value of data. So maybe that there is, uh, there are digital industries that maybe are emerging in Uganda or out, from outside Uganda, they, they come in, and also there is the oil industry that is starting, which would be useful to bring it in to make the point that there is a need for integration of data in Uganda. And the same is in a number of other countries. Yeah? Um, okay. Omar, do you want to kind of conclude a yes. little bit about this so that we I then... I already concluded. Can I just, before Omar Please. speaks, can I just suggest, uh, Mihaela, that it would be useful if your, um, CPTM is able to produce um, a one-page vision statement on what you think is required. Maybe Omar might want to draft that. Yes. And I can then, certainly from the Australian point of view, take that up with Dr. Alan Finkel, who is the chief scientist. Yeah, so excellent. I'm in a dialogue, but I'll be able to do it by saying, this is what's emerged from CPTM's work this week. How do you respond? Excellent. I'll also raise it in New South Wales, because uh, the state chief scientist is uh, someone who's got an office uh, only um, a mile away from where I'm sitting at the moment. Uh -huh. Excellent, excellent. Can I, can I ask yeah. you, the, we were told that the South Australian government had produced a report on the digital landscape. Did you yeah. mention that? So no. I sent that to Mahela. Right, right. So I sent that after the, the excellent meeting that we had before. Yeah. And I then sent it on to Mahela. Oh, so right. so there is certainly interest, you know, there are amongst yeah. some people in this subject. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I think that's... Actually, I'm happy to send it directly to you if you want to send me an email. Uh, Mahela can um, yeah. give you my contact details. And I'll certainly be happy to be in touch directly with you, Cathy.